welcome you all in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God loves you so much. So do I. Amen. I want you to understand. Asha's assist. I want you to understand something. That you are not here today by default. You are not listening to this word by default. It is not a coincidence. You were meant to be in this place today. Amen. You were meant to be in this place today. And God has a purpose for you. Hallelujah. And God has a what? Said God has a purpose for my life. Say he loves me. He knows me. He cares about me. Hallelujah. Last Sunday, we, we spoke about two sides of redemption. How I many of you still remember them? Is the legal side of this redemption. The legal side of redemption is what has been done, what Jesus Christ has done. He fulfilled the law. Hallelujah. If he died so that we don't die anymore. I'm just putting in plain, simple English. And also we spoke about the, we, didn't, we said today we're going to share about the vital side of redemption. What is being done? The vital side of redemption, we can define it as the current ministry of Jesus Christ. What Jesus Christ is doing right now. Hallelujah. Because many of us think that Jesus Christ has stopped. That is the current ministry of Jesus Christ. What is happening right now? Through Jesus Christ. It is his current ministry. And the lack of this knowledge makes us to miss the benefits of salvation. That's why many, of, many people have taken Christianity as one of the religions. That's the biggest lie. If we are not one of the religions, we are the life. We are what? We are the only faith that is based on the death of our Savior. We are the only one who can proclaim that Jesus died for us. The one who loves us died for us. No any other faith has what we have. Amen. So that's, that's what makes us different. We cease to be a religion. Hallelujah. So today I want, us, I want you to understand, to listen carefully, the vital side of redemption. What Jesus has done and what, Je no, what Jesus is doing. The legal side, it talks about what has been done to fulfill the law. To make us to be where we are today is because of what has been done. So the vital side requires us to believe what Jesus is doing now through the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. That's where your faith comes in. That's where your faith comes in. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you that you are the God who changes not. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for what you have done for us. You died for us on the cross. What more can we ask for? You said it, Lord Jesus Christ, on the cross. You said in your own words, it is finished. We believe that, Father, it is finished. We are walking in the newness of life. In the newness of revelation. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. You have got so much notes. I don't know where to start, but I'll start from the beginning. 
As some, of, some of you will say, start from the beginning. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, it is well with you. No, say like you say, it is well with you. Say, we serve a God who answers prayers. Hallelujah. Say, God does not ignore his children. Do you believe that? Do you believe that God is not ignoring you? That's where your faith comes in. Let us go straight to the word. Wow. Let us go to 1 Peter 3.18. I'm starting with 1 Peter 3.18. I want to take notes because today it will be a word, a verse after a verse, because I want the word to explain the word. Amen? Not the mind of man. Not what men think. Hallelujah. You are what the word says you are. First Peter chapter 3 verse 18 If you are there, say shalom. How can you be there so fast, Lafita Muruchi? What's your problem? Wow. Are we competing? Hmm? First Peter 3, 18. Check this. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring to us to God being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit. First Peter 3.18 For Christ also suffered once for the sins. So this verse has got two elements. It got the legal side of redemption. Jesus died for the unjust. Who is the unjust? Say, I I was the unjust. I lived in sin. Jesus died so that I can be justified. Say, therefore, there is no more, no condemnation. Say, I cannot be condemned. I am justified to live the life that Jesus died for. Hallelujah. Can you read the verse? It says, for Christ suffered once for sins. L listen to this. Christ suffered once for sins. Meaning, we have been redeemed once and it's done. Are we together? You have been redeemed how many times? Once and it's what? It's done. Hallelujah. Satan can no longer be the Lord over your life. Who is the Lord? The one who says, stand up, you stand up. Sit down, you sit down. It's your master. Be sick, you get sick. Be poor, you get poor. Be confused, you become confused. That, that's the lordship. So, I want you to look at your life today. What are the areas in your life that are not compatible with what Jesus died for? Don't, don't, don't tell me. I want you to write, to, to, to write that one down. Because these are the areas where you go and say, here, yeah, Jesus died once. He's not going to go for the, to the cross again. You are restored. Amen? I'm, I'm going to tell you why. He said, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. Why was he put to death on the flesh? When men fell from the grace, when men, it's fine, when men, when men committed sin, they fell from the spirit to the flesh. And in the flesh, 
That's where death resides. What is the flesh? I'm not talking about your physical flesh. Flesh in the Bible can speak about your physical flesh or carnality. What is being carnal-minded? Everything that you do that is outside God or that is not backed up with the word of God. When we died, when we fell from the graves, man fell into the flesh. His reasoning became what? Carnal. We, we started devising plans to make ourselves alive or to better our lives. For example, as soon as Adam and Eve realized that they were naked, the Bible said that they took the fig leaves and sew garments for them. That's what a flesh does. What flesh does, it makes plans outside God so that flesh can survive. And the moment you start making plans outside God to survive, Satan automatically becomes the Lord of the life, of the plans, over the life, over the plans that you are making. Are we together? Okay, I cannot... Can I repeat that again? The moment you make plans outside God, you are, send, you are surrendering all that pertains that plans to Satan. You are saying, Satan, as much as I've been a fallen man before, as I'm, live, as I'm making these plans outside the spirit of God in the flesh, he automatically does what? Take over. You don't invite him. When you are cooking malamuhodu, you don't invite the flies. They come. Am I right? There is no invitation for them. So, the moment you make plans in the flesh, you are like a person who has placed was cooking malamuhodu with open doors and windows because we do that. And we forget that as we open doors for the windows for, for the smell to go out, the flies will come through the same door. Am I talking to someone? So those, those are the plans that we make. He said, Jesus died in the flesh. Why? So that we must look back unto God. So that we must look back unto Jesus. Why? The flesh has been killed. The reason why God did not allow man or any of the prophets to die for us is because we all had the lineage of Adam. We were all the seed of Adam. And God said, no, I'm going to say something. We're going to be the seed of who? Of Abraham. In you, Abraham, all the nations shall be blessed. Through who? Christ Jesus. So, so I want you to look into your life. That's why I say write those things down. Because I don't want us to be a religious church. I don't want you to come out of the church and not able to apply the word of God practically in your life. Then you are not in the church, you are in an entertainment somewhere. Hallelujah. Look into the areas of your life. Where did we kick God out? Where is the flesh taking over? Take here, he said, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the spirit. Why? He was put to death in the flesh and made alive by the spirit to restore the image that men lost in the garden. When God said, let us make men according to our image, according to our likeness, God was talking to the spirit of the man. That the reason why there is no way in the Bible, I'm, 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 I want you to go to search. If you read Genesis 1, 26, 27, 28, God was releasing a blessing to a spirit man. The one who looks like him. He blessed the spirit man. When, the, when men fell from the grace, the blessing were not withdrawn. They were just not, not accessible. Am I talking to someone? So, 
sin did not make people withdraw the it just called it caused another ability a curse which which has the ability to put your life in in reverse when that curse is caused it's by by the reason of the flesh and the lordship of Jesus over your life the curse become empowered more than a blessing Am I talking to someone? Okay, l- l- let, me, let me repeat this. Flesh equals to what? Say carnality. Say carnality equals to Satan. Satan equals to what? Curse. So flesh, carnality, curse, one side. Jesus Spirit, resurrection, blessing. Are we, are, are we together? Jesus, resurrection, spirit. No, Jesus, death, resurrection, spirit. They are equal to what? Blessing. But when we walk in the flesh, we empower Satan to become the Lord of our lives. When, when he is the Lord of our lives, instead of a blessing, a curse come. What is a curse? A supernatural power to make you fail. That's my definition. What is a blessing? A supernatural power to make you succeed. So, how do we then avoid this? Because we're talking the vital side of redemption. How do we then avoid this? One, the Bible said, if we confess with your mouth, that Jesus has died on the cross, was resurrected. You shall be what? Saved. And you confess the lordship of Jesus Christ. But it doesn't end there. You don't just confess the Lord Jesus Christ. The, the Bible said, you shall know them by their what? Fruit. Your actions tells you your mind and body where you belong. How are you thinking? I'm going to talk about the most sensitive part, prayer. Some people were in their flesh. They say, what is it that you are telling God the whole night, if you are praying the whole night? Because the flesh cannot fathom somebody praying the whole night. Hallelujah. But when you are in the spirit, it becomes koinonia fellowship with God. Hallelujah. Are we together? So let me just sum sum up what I told you this introduction. When you live in the flesh, you empower the curse over a blessing. Not that you are cursed. You are empowering. Hallelujah. You are empowering what the curse. But when you live in the spirit, you empower a blessing over what? No, we, we cannot say over a curse because a curse cannot even come near to the person who is living in the, in the spirit. So, when you live in the spirit, you are empowered to be blessed. So, blessing becomes your portion. Because that's what Jesus Christ has died for. When Jesus died on the flesh, he died with the curse. The Bible said, cursed is anyone who hangs on the tree. Who is that Jesus Christ? Are we going somewhere? Are you going somewhere? Say Jesus is my substitute. I cannot be cursed. He has been cursed on my behalf. He carries a curse. On my behalf, I am a candidate of blessings. Hallelujah. Must we continue? Take this verse down again. First Timothy. First Timothy 3.16. Is the, is, is the last part. Is 
is, is also confessing God was manifested in the flesh. So I, I, want, I, I want you to see something here. Why are we saying First Peter says Jesus died in the flesh. Amen? And First Timothy says God was manifested in the flesh. So what are we saying here? Say God was manifested in the flesh and he died my death. Do you know that God died for you? Did you know that God died for you? But the Bible says Jesus. Yes, Jesus is God. Say the blood of God was shed for me. That, that's something that Satan doesn't want you to know. <laughs> the blood of God was shed for me. Said even to this day, his blood is speaking better things for me than the blood of animals. Say, I disempower any shed blood of animal shed for me or against me. I stand in the authority of the blood of God who was manifested through his son, Jesus Christ. So check here, God was manifest, justified in the spirit. For who? God was manifested where? In the flesh. Justified in the spirit. For who? So that the condemnation that was due to you might miss you and receive you. Receive what? Justification. Because we were all doomed for condemnation. We were all doomed for death. But when the justification came in the spirit, it went straight to the spirit man, the one who looks like God. And said, that man who fell from the grace, that man who, the man who, who used to be certain slaves through sin, is now justified to enter the Holy of Holies and Speak with God and speak like God and declare things like God. That is, the Bible said, you shall declare a thing that shall be established. The condemned cannot declare anything. That's why it's important. It's important to deal away with your flesh. Carnal mind. Carnal mind, there's no ability to discern the word of God. Hallelujah. Let us go to Ephesians 2.10. I love this scripture. This is the first sermon that we prayed, that we preached on the first Sunday of when we started this church. It was Ephesians 2.10. I want you to read it Say, we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God afore prepared that we should work in them. The other person said, which God prepared beforehand that we should work in them. So check this. When God justified you in the spirit, there are Things that he has prepared for you beforehand that you should work in them. So many of us miss the mark. We, 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 we miss the mark. We don't walk on that which they prepared. We walk by the flesh. We make fleshly decisions because it is easier to make a decision based on the flesh. Why? Because the relationship with the soul and flesh, and flesh is stronger than the relationship which you have with the spirit. 
because of what we entertain. Say from today onwards, I declare and decree that my spirit will be ruled by the spirit of God. Say my relationship with my soul and body will be subjected to the word of God so that the spirit of God might reign over my spirit. That's how it should be. Am I talking to someone? Are we together? So when that happens, you become what? God's workmanship. Created where? In Christ Jesus. You know, there's something that you are missing. You know, someone who has been in, if, let, 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 let me put it this way. If, if you want the muffins to stay around, you'll put them in a round pen, right? You'll pour flour in the right pen, right? And when you bake this, 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 this one, round, they are conforming to what? To the pen. So when God says you have been created in Christ Jesus, you have been poured into him. When you come out, you come out like him. You have conformed to him. Everything about you is like him. No, no, no. I'm not sure if you understand who you are. You know, when you are conformed to him, when you step out of a pen, a baking pen called Jesus, what will the demon see? Jesus. What will sickness see? Jesus. What will poverty see? Jesus. What will, what, what will accident see? Jesus. Why? Because you are created in him. You come out like him. You walk like him. You are in the spirit like him. When you speak, you speak like him. When you command, you command like him. Say, I'm created in Christ Jesus for good works. Underline for good works. Underline for good works. Why good works? If the Bible can mention good works, it means that they are bad works. Because the Bible did not say we are created in Christ Jesus for works. He said for what? For good works. What are your good works? Some of you are becoming religious now. What are my good works? Hey, you know what? I greet pastor three times a day. Doctor's prescription. Doctor's prescription three times a day. Once in the morning, once in the afternoon, and once in the evening. And then, and then I, go, I, go, I go to church four times a week. Sometimes I just come and stand by the gate, even though they are locked and said I've been to church. That's how good I am. No. The good works, what Jesus has done on the cross are your works. No, it's, it's, it's the other side of redemption that you don't understand. That what Jesus has done on the cross, those becomes what? Your works. So those good works that emanate from the cross, that come out in the blood of Jesus, when they come to you, they create what you call a miraculous walk. Why a miraculous walk? A natural man walking in the supernatural. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think now. Are we still fine? Say, I'm created for good works. Say, I'm a natural man walking in the supernatural. In the path that was prepared for me beforehand that I should walk in. That's what you should believe. So, Many of us, we are quick to receive the bad works of Satan. Ah, you know what? The current narrative. You know what? It's COVID. Yeah. You know COVID times, everything has been affected. 
Akina Chelet. He is the God. He is still God, COVID or no COVID. He is the God of good and bad times. He is still the Lord of your lives. What God does is not directed by the current weather, narrative, or state of being. If you are in Christ, you are above all powers and principalities. Am I talking to someone? You don't think in the flesh. You don't reason like the world. You don't justify the works of the enemy. Those are not good works. You were created in Christ for good works. What do you do? You speak the good works. Can you see the good works? No. We speak those things that be not as though they are. We declare those things. We don't have to see them. For the just shall live by faith. Am I talking to someone? Be careful of your language. Ah, you know. Ah, this year, ah, my man. Ah, business is bad. Ah, you know, we know we're not going anywhere. Business is bad. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, they might retrench any time. And I don't know what I'm going to do if I'm retrenched. Eh? You don't know what you're going to do if you are retrenched. So, you are putting yourself in a retrenchment list. Those are not the good works. Say, I'm created for good works. Say, I shall be above, not the tail. So, what, so everything that, anything bad comes, the blood of Jesus on the tail. Everything bad shall do. I say, pass over. I can say, pass over. Say, everything bad shall do what? Because you are created for what? Why? Which, when, when were those good works prepared? Let, let us go to Ephesians 1 4. I want, you, I want you to see something. We'll go back to Ephesians 2 10. Let us go to Ephesians 1 4. I just want you to see something. The, the, the current side of redemption, what is happening now in you? Something that you need to know. Ephesians 1 4. What is Kathy? Ephesians 1 4. Look, you go call Kathy. What does it say? Just as he chose us in him. Before what? Yeah, let us stop there. He chose us in him before the foundations of the world. Pumulani, don't go there. Go sit down. You'll do it. He chose us where? In him when? Before the foundations of the world. So where were you? In him. In who is In Christ. So even when you fell in sin, what, when Jesus Christ died, he didn't die for Christians. There's something that many Christians are missing. He didn't die for Christians because when he died, there was no Christianity. Before he died, there was no Christianity. He died for the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever shall believe him shall not what? Whosoever believes in him shall not what? Perish. But have what? Everlasting life. So it is the belief that puts you back where to be where you went, God. So before you were born, you had a complete fellowship with God. He told you what he has prepared for you beforehand. In your spirit, man, you are wired to walk your walk. That's the reason why some of us are artists, some are engineers, some are lawyers, some are managers, some are administrators. Why? Those things, they were in you before you were born. He, has, he said, in Christ, you, he has prepared something for you beforehand that you should walk in it. 
So most of us, because we don't know that we're in him, we mix our life with the flesh, the spirit. The flesh, when it suits me, I'm in the flesh. Tell me, when it's raining, I'm just going to give you a silly example. Do you sleep in your house, half of your body outside in the rain, and half of your body inside? You don't do that, ne? We know how to protect the flesh fully. When it's cold, we'll dress up, we'll be warm. When it's hot, we'll, we'll loosen up. But we neglect the spirit man. We don't know how to protect the spirit man. We forget our origin. You know what? His grace is sufficient. Can I tell you something? I want you to run in front of the truck when in, in the full speed and say his grace is sufficient. Will you do that? Do you know why you won't do that? Because your flesh will feel the pain. Am I right? Okay, not in front of a truck, even in front of a motorcycle. You won't do that. Do you know why? You have the ability to protect the flesh. Your flesh will feel the pain. The pain. But we're forgetting the redeemed spirit man. The redeemed spirit man is yearning for the full fellowship with God without being dipped in and out. Say I was in him before the foundation of the world. Do you know what that does mean? Can I give a literal interpretation? I was in him before the foundation of my life. I was in him before the foundation of my marriage. I was in him before the foundation of my finances. I was in him before the foundation of my health. I was in him before time was. So what do I do? I go back to him in spirit. How do I do it? Living by the word. Protecting my spirit man as if I'm protecting my body. If some of you can see how naked we are in the spirit, we'll be concerned. Hallelujah. So I love this. When men fell from the grace, God said, no, I'm not giving up. These guys, I know them. They were in me. I know him very well. I know all that they need is me. If, if they can see my spirit man, if they can see me and their spirit man connect with me, they will be like God. Don't you know that you are God? It's not Psalm 82. They will be like me. They will be taken to and fro by the issues of the world. They will live the life that I've ordained them to live. They will live a victorious life. They won't live their life crying and complaining. They will live their life declaring, praying, and, and winning. They will know that sometimes things will be difficult. But when things are difficult, it doesn't mean that God is on leave. This is what God told me. What do you do when God hardens the heart of your Pharaoh? Remember when the children of Egypt were supposed to leave Egypt? Who delayed the process? God. God said, I hardened Pharaoh's heart so that my glory can be seen. Sometimes we are not going through things because God is absent or doesn't care about you. God wants you to see his glory and he wants you to come out a finished product. Am I talking to someone? Why? Because he knows you. You were in him before the foundation of the world. He knows you. 
There is nothing new that is happening to your life that God does not know. He has prepared beforehand a gift of victory. Let us go to Ephesians 2.10 again. He has prepared beforehand. That's why I said, yes, there is a work that God has prepared for you. When God hardens the Pharaoh of your heart, of your life, of your situation, when it look like things are not going well, don't blame God. Don't say, God, where are you? Say, Father, give me the grace to endure until the last moment. Hallelujah. Because when you were in him, God didn't see you complaining. He didn't see you in a pity party. He didn't see you condemned. That's why he said, let us make men according to our image. Why? You will be like God. God who said, water, you are not where you're supposed to be. Go there, I'll call you the sea. F, go there, I'll call you. And you heap of stones, go there, I'll call you the mountains. And when he was doing all those things, you were in him. You know and understand the power and the authority that God has. But when men fell from the grave, he said, no. I'm not going to leave them like that. I'm going to give them my word. I'm going to take them back. They will know how to speak like me. What are they going to use? My word. When they speak my word, they will be speaking like me. What they had in me before the foundation of the world. And they will understand that there is something that has prepared for them that they should walk in them. When they speak the word. When they live in the word. Hallelujah. What is your language, Mzalwane? What is your language? One thing that I know is that the church is discouraged. Currently, the church is discouraged. When I say the church, I'm thinking about Wazalwan. They are discouraged. They feel like God is dead because of what, what is happening, the corona. But I want to put it to you. You're not going to like what I'm going to say. Even if Muzalwana got to go for the corona, Satan did not win. God has won. Hallelujah. I'm not speaking death. You won't die. I want you to go to God. Many people have said there are pastors who died of corona. They were not weak in faith. We won't understand the mystery of death. But what we should understand that we who are here, who are still alive right now, God is trusting us to turn the situation around, to turn the table against Satan. Why? Because we know what God is capable of because we're in him. Before the foundation of the world. We understand the heavenly language. When God said let there be. You were there. Takani. You said oh. God said let there be light. And there was light. Oh. JD what is that? I mean that's my little you in God. What is that? Don't worry my son. Watch. Watch. Watch next. Let there be light. Yeah. God. Do you do that? No. Watch. Watch. You are coming. No. By the time I get to 26. I will be talking about you. Let the water be separated. Let, let darkness be separated. God, what is there? Don't worry. By the time I get to 26, it will be you. And he said, son, I'm done. Now is your turn. Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, let us make men according to our image. What? The whole hell was shocked. Something that you don't know. Satan was perplexed. He was angry. I'm not even in the image of God. I've been created as an assistant in heaven. And now God is saying, he's going to make men, not according to his image only, according to the image of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. What manner of men that will be? Demons were in trouble. The three in one man is going to earth. And today, the three in one man is living like a zero in zero man. 
Yes. The three in one man, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, is living like a zero to zero man. No God in him or her. I can see hell being perplexed. They're scrambling. Board meeting after board meeting. What do we do after that three in one man? Certain say, we, even if we can send a billion of demons, one word, we are dead. He's like God. So don't even try to attack him with demons. That one is not for warfare. It's for deception. The other demons are sitting there and said, but I'm stronger. I'm meant to stronger. Demon, that man is like God. Not only like God and like Jesus. Not only like Jesus, like the Holy Spirit also. So, where are you going to start with that man? Let us search around the garden. Let us search around. Let's search around. They do their due diligence. They find that there is something called death. And God said, if they, Satan said, guys, I've got a plan. Only death can defeat that person. And when death defeating is disconnected to God, they are ours. It happened. And when it happened, Jesus Christ said, no, I'm dying. They are back, they are man. They are, they are three in one man. But man is still half deceived, half saved by entertaining the issues of the flesh. And we miss the vital side of redemption. Are we together? Say me. Say me. Deceived. Never. Say every deception sent by Satan my way. I refuse you. I release the blood of Jesus Christ against you. Say I stand saved. I shall walk in the fullness of the glory of God in this season. Am I talking to someone? Say, I'm, I am his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus for good works. So begin to declare your good works. What are your good works that you want to see in your life? Some of you will say, I'm promoted. Some of you will say, I'm prosperous. My business is booming. Hallelujah. Are we getting somewhere? Do you love the vital side of redemption? But now let us continue. Uh, Ephesians 2.13 But now, in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Jesus. Wow. By the blood of Christ. You need to check here. It's not saying by the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Christ. Why not Jesus but Christ? It's referring to the purpose. The anointing in the blood. <laughs> if you didn't know. The anointing in the blood has brought you near to him. So what does that mean? When a child is being bullied at home or anywhere, where do they run to? To their mother. What happens when they are next to their mother? Will anybody touch them? No. I know a story of a woman who lived, at, who lived up the truck to remove the child from the under the, underneath the tire. When they ask, how did you do it? She said, I don't know. All that I saw was that my baby was under the truck and I need to get together. I mean, that's what I did. In other ways, a mother will do anything to save the child. So how about us who are near Christ? Through the blood. Do you know who you are? Do you know who you are? The pity party must be over. You are brought near Christ through his blood. In him you live 
you move and have your being. So when you go out there, walk in boldness, it doesn't matter who does what. Say that me in Christ, mm -mm. these two, they are equal to victory. So bring them on. It, it, I once said that at work, somebody who threatened that they will bewitch me. Said, are you going to do that? I said, okay, let me give you an advice. Please bring it like an 80 kg amut. Bring it on. 80 kg. So that when you fail, you don't say, my, my mood was too small. And then that person went to wherever, came back. Two weeks later, that person was dead. I am near Christ. You cannot touch me. I have been brought near by his blood. Declare that. Say, I have been brought near by his blood. But now in Christ, you who were once far off, far off when? Far off is not a distance. It's not a physical distance. You who were in carnal, in carnality, you who were in the flesh, were far off, but you have been brought near by his blood. How so? There's something that I'm going to tell you. The blood didn't bring you near because it was on the cross. The blood on the cross was useless. It's blasphemy. The blood on earth was useless until the blood was presented in the mercy seat, the holy of holies in heaven. The blood gained power. Why am I saying? What am I saying? The blood of the, of the, of the lamb in the basin was useless. And this was applied on the, on the door frame. The blood of the animals when it was shed outside. It was useless until the high priest take the blood and sprinkle it on the mercy seat for the sins of the children of Israel. So even the blood of Jesus Christ on the cross, it was useless until Jesus Christ take it himself to heaven and present it to the Father as the redemption for our sins. Then the blood gave birth. So the blood that brought you near has been presented to God. And God said, I don't see their sins no more. I don't see their weaknesses no more. I don't see the. In fact, they have become like you, Christ. I see them through.